What up, coordination? How you doing? This is the Gitcoin Grants quarterly episode. This episode, we're going to talk to Scott Moore, co-founder and public goods funding workstream lead at Gitcoin DAO, Annika Lewis, public goods funding workstream lead, Kevin Olson, VP engineering, Lindsay Thrift, VP product, and Austin Griffith, who is a DAO steward at Gitcoin DAO. This episode is a snapshot in time of Gitcoin becoming Gitcoin DAO. For the first time, we've actually got modular parts of the Grants 2.0 protocol that are going live. And this is a great episode to understand what the future of quadratic funding is at Gitcoin and the modular components that are, that are being built in Grants 2.0. Coordination, I'm really excited about this episode. I don't like to talk my own book on this podcast too much, but Grants 2.0 is coming and we're starting to roll it out in Grants Round 14. So whether you're interested in the technology of Grants 2.0 or you're interested in just the details of Grants it's round 14. This is a really fun episode in a time when the markets are down, in which we're out of the bull market. There's still $3 million worth of matching for your favorite public goods on Gitcoin grants. So the markets are down, but our hopes for public goods are way, way up. And so I'm so excited about this episode. Without further ado, I bring you the Gitcoin Dow stewards for Gitcoin grants round 14. When you shop for plane tickets, you probably use Kayak, Expedia, or Google to compare ticket prices. So why would you limit yourself to just one exchange when you trade crypto? When you make your trades, you wanna make sure you're getting the best possible price on your trade. And that's why you should be using Matcha. Matcha has smart order routing that splits your trade across all the various liquidity sources in Ethereum. And is also operational on Polygon, Avalanche, Binance Smart Chain, and other chains. Trading on Matcha is super easy because it pools the liquidity for me in a single easy to use platform and allows me to make limit on-chain orders. So you can set and forget your DeFi trades and they will go through automatically while you're away. So when you're making a trade, head over to matcha.xyz slash bankless and connect your wallet to start getting the best prices and most liquidity when you trade your crypto assets. Opolis is a member-owned digital employment cooperative offering payroll, health insurance, and membership perks that go beyond the basics that you would find at your normal 9 to 5. Opolis offers not only health benefits, but also pay stubs and W-2s, workers' comp, and unemployment insurance, as well as disability benefits for independent DAO workers that are traditionally reserved for regular employment situations. Opolis provides a tax-compliant way to get your paycheck in crypto and professionalize your work-life situation. Opolis members enjoy an average of 20 to 50% savings on top-rated national group health insurances, as well as self-sovereign portable employment. You can also get tokenized rewards based on consumption, staking, and referrals, and also the ability to fund payroll in fiat and stablecoins without the use of centralized exchange. You can also receive paychecks in fiat and whitelisted digital currencies. So sign up for Opolis today and get a thousand work and a thousand bank tokens when you become a member of Opolis by May 25th, 2022, and get started working your self-sovereign life. Hey, hey, welcome to this episode of Green Pill. We are here to talk about Gitcoin DAO around 14, $3 million worth of matching available until June 23rd. Scott, you want to tee us off by telling us about the round at a high level? Yeah, absolutely. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Gitcoin Grants is a program that allows you to basically donate to goods you care about, public goods you care about in the context of your own local communities. So we've run so many of these rounds with projects in the Ethereum ecosystem. And now we're starting to branch out into running even more of them with local ecosystems, like for example, the Graph, uh, Polygon, and then other causes the community cares about. So things like the climate, things like crypto advocacy in the context of emerging regulatory environments. And the goal here is really to think about what, you know, when we think about public goods, what is the public that we care about? Well, it's usually something in our own communities. It's something that's local to us, something that we've seen and touched and sort of felt locally. And so the goal of this expansion into these new rounds is really to figure out what are those different kind of shared needs that people have and how do we figure out ways to essentially get the signal from those different groups and then in turn figure out what the broader global public goods that we need to fund are. So we have 20,000 people providing their signal in this round so far. Um, that's with $3 million, as you mentioned, of matching funds that are available. And we're super excited to see just what people decide to fund. Um, yeah, I'll pass it back to you, Kevin. Amazing. Uh, Annika, you want to take us into the details of Grants Round 14? What changes have been made this round? What the rounds are? Stuff like that? Yeah. So as Scott mentioned, we've got over $3 million in matching funds in Grants Round 14, which is awesome to see. Uh, in terms of the structure of the round, so the DAO ratified a structure that is fairly similar to what we had in Grants Round 13 on an overall level. So we've got 
the main round, our ecosystem rounds, and our cause rounds. And so the main round for Grants Round 14, as usual, is the round that is available to any grantee on the platform with an Ethereum payout address. So all grants on that platform are eligible for that $1 million matching pool. We then have the ecosystem rounds, which Scott spoke briefly about, which are really helping specific communities build and fund their shared needs. Uh, we have 14 ecosystem rounds this time in Grants Round 14, which is a very fitting number, uh, also about a million dollars across those rounds. And then finally, we have the cause rounds, which represent an expansion kind of beyond just Web3 ecosystems and into more off-chain social causes and, and things that you may not typically always see funded with, with crypto. And so the three cause rounds that we have for Grants Round 14 are climate, blockchain advocacy, and a brand new round around diversity, equity, and inclusion in the Web3 space. So that's the structure of, of the round overall. Uh, if you're a grantee who's who's applied for a grant, definitely check out all of the different rounds and the eligibility criteria for each one to see which ones you might be eligible for. If you're someone who's just looking to see what's out there and fund different grants, go to gitcoin.co slash grants and you can browse through and see what grants you might like to fund. And yeah, we're really excited and encouraged by uh, by what we're seeing so far. The community is really stepping up in spite of the bear market to fund public goods. And it's been it's been honestly an awesome, pleasant surprise to see kind of the volume and uh, and and just excitement around around this round uh, so far. Yeah, it's really neat to see that when the number is going down in the market, the amount of funding and Gitcoin grants is going up. I think if I'm not mistaken, this has been one of the strongest rounds yet out of the gate, which is really curious given the given the bear market. So number of contribution goes up. And it sounds like the number of rounds that is being run on Gitcoin grants is is uh, is going up too. So anything to add about that, Annika or, or Scott? Yeah, I think one thing I, I would love to just shout out that I think we we noticed before the round is the willingness and, and eagerness of many different types of partners to fund these types of rounds. Um, we we saw Coinbase announced a commitment of a million dollars to Gitcoin grants just about a month ago before grants around fourteen started up. And they're funding the ETH infrastructure round that Scott talked about earlier. Um, we've got Kimball Musk funding in the climate round. And so even seeing kind of some of these, you know, more more Web2 native philanthropists come in and, and try and, you know, think about how they might use crypto for good. So to me, I'm just really encouraged by kind of the diversity of, of projects, of funders, of, of folks who are starting to get involved um, in, in spite of these, these times we're in market wise. As you can see from this background, we are in a bear market after all. I don't have a green screen anymore. It's just out of the budget. But I think the infrastructure round in particular is special to me because, you know, as the numbers suggest, we've run 14 of these rounds. When you think about it, it's actually been almost four years of running Gitcoin grants because each of these rounds happens quarterly. We try and be very cautious about how frequently we run them in order to make sure that we're running them on a sort of sustainable cadence for the community. And the infrastructure round in particular is kind of where we started. So everyone kind of remembers, uh, for those of you who were around the early, the bear market in 2018, and it was, you know, in many ways, a challenging time, but also kind of a time that built a lot of camaraderie and a lot of shared sort of interest in the space. And a lot of the grantees that we had in that sort of cohort have ended up being some of the most successful projects in the space over the last sort of like year or two years perhaps even longer. So things like Ethers.js, things like Uniswap or Yearn or POAP, all these things kind of came out of that bear market. And I think Coinbase coming back and showing that they're willing to support that is actually probably, to me, the most like heartening thing about this whole round, even though there's lots of other amazing stuff going on. That's just my own, my own small sort of like niche. But yeah, I'm super excited to see that live. So if history repeats, this bear market will have some of the most genre-defining projects coming out of it. And Gitcoin Grants is a place to get funding where when not a lot of other people are writing checks, or I guess whatever the digital equivalent is of writing checks, sending transactions. Yeah, I really hope that this bear market, we actually see a lot more people going back to uh, basics in some way. I think that like we've kind of gotten ahead of ourselves in a lot of you know spaces. Um, we've, we've certainly seen that, I think, um, across people listening. I'm sure people have seen that too. Um, and I think that naturally we're going to end up with a lot more sort of Uniswaps and urines and the rounds to come. Amazing. Uh, we'd love to transition into the Gitcoin's transition into a DAO. And I know that there's some new goodies that have been built by the builders of Gitcoin DAO. Kevin Olson, let's start with you. Tell us about Gitcoin Passport. Yeah, man. So um, so Gitcoin Passport 
um i was trying to think about how to how to like kick this off i think you brought this idea to me um gosh like back in like february or something you were like there's this thing we've Mm -hmm. been trying to build for a while called passport and um luckily i think we were at uh uh east denver right caught evan's talk and got disco pilled and and it like fit perfectly into like how we were thinking about this identity is this, this, this reputation system and um, ultimately like adopted more or less that architecture, right? Dids and VCs. So decentralized identifiers and verifiable credentials as a way for folks to like get some like self-sovereign identity. Um, but then also working with Lindsay, thinking about our, our roadmap for, for grants too, um, identity jumped out as like one of the first things to build, right? So, so here we are, we've, we've got our first uh, like bit of new uh, protocol code coming out. It's the Gitcoin Passport. So this is a chance for folks to basically interact with something you might be familiar with. We have the Gitcoin Trust Bonus, which before you could link your Twitter and your Facebook and ENS and, and all these things. And we would store that in you know the Gitcoin monolith. Uh, we've taken that out. So we've ripped that out now. So there's an independent app at passport.gitcoin.co. You can build your passport there. And that's all your information that's sitting on top of Ceramic. So Ceramic's been a great tech partner for us through this whole process, joining us for engineering calls and helping make sure we're building this the right way, even offered some PRs back to us. So they've been fantastic. Um, and yeah, now it's live. And so you build this passport and you can take that, you can think of it as like your data, right? It's sitting on the ceramic network, but you control it with your, uh, your wallet and you can bring that back to Gitcoin now. And we ingest that and that's how we generate your trust bonus now. So it, while it kind of looks similar, um, it's kind of the same mechanic. It's kind of our, our way for people to prove that they are you know, unique human beings and, and good faith actors in our system, not not Sybil attackers. Um, so you might know it and recognize it. Um, but one of the things that's really exciting for me is like kind of where it can go, right? It's a substrate now that's like kind of infinitely extensible and can take us in all kinds of really interesting ways. Um, you know, n- n- no secret, we're all th- reading the DSOC paper and thinking about like where that can go. Um, I'm really excited about uh, that product in particular, having a bit of a life of its own and leading us into, you know, getting some new data uh, that we can use for some pretty novel new mechanisms. So I'm thinking this has a kind of a key to us innovating on just QF in general. Right. So Gitcoin Passport is the new building block for identity on the Gitcoin network. And as opposed to being a centralized profile hosted at Gitcoin.co, now all the data is hosted on the ceramic network. And it's a money Lego for civil resistance. So basically, quadratic funding relies on civil resistance, which just basically means that we prevent sock puppets from using the network. And using the passport, we provide more civil resistance for eventually what will be the grants 2.0 protocol. Is that more or less right? Yeah, 100%, man. That's it. Cool. Well, uh, I think uh, people who listen to this podcast a lot know that I'm really excited about uh, an ecosystem that could move from one token, one vote to one person, one vote. And civil resistance is an important money Lego. Um, Gitcoin Passport doesn't provide any sort of civil resistance on its own, though. It's It sort of aggregates other right. civil resistance providers. Do you want to say who we're partnered with there or who we've integrated? Uh, yeah, I mean, you've got your kind of classic OAuth Web2 stuff. So you've got Twitter, uh, Google, Facebook. Um, there's a GitHub stamp coming out, too. By the way, we use the metaphor of passports and stamps. So if you hear me say stamp, just think of VC in the back of your head, if that's what you're more familiar with. And then we've also got ENS, uh, Bright ID proof of humanity. Um, and there's a few more that are actually coming out uh, and asking to, to integrate with us. So we're starting to get, get requests inbound, which is pretty cool. Nice. So basically being able to aggregate Web 2 identity, Web 3 identity, place it in a self-sovereign data store in Ceramic, and then provide civil resistance back to Gitcoin grants. Will Passport be used by other apps besides Gitcoin grants in the future yeah. to provide civil resistance? Well, that's, that's, that's the hope, right? So this should be pretty easy for folks to integrate. There's an SDK that we've written that's coming out. Um, there's actually a hackathon that we're hoping to invite folks into. So so come join us. Uh, I think might be running by the time people listen to this, but um, it's a good way to get a sense of uh, what you can build with Passport. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of groups uh, that are starting to reach out as well about potentially even just integrating Passport as like a first rung in civil defense for their ecosystems too. So uh, good chance it's um, good to get some, some adoption in the space, which is pretty exciting. Alrighty, that is Gitcoin Passport. Thanks so much, Kevin. Anything else to say about Gitcoin Passport? Uh, no, I mean, go build your passport, um, see how it works for you, and um, come hack on it and see how cool. you can improve it. What's the URL for that? Passport.gitcoin.co. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Hey, uh, Austin, would love to move on to you and talk about the voting app that the Build Guild built with uh, 
th- this this season. So can you tell us about the genesis of the idea and what got you so excited about it and how people can access it? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yes, I can right. for sure. You would even probably be the better person to give us the problem statement. Right. But the TLDR is the horse race problem, right? Like basically the shilliest shiller ends up shilling the most and getting the most uh, money up front, which moves them to the top, which means they get the most money during the grants round. And we're looking for a different signal, some other way to sort those grants in a way where, uh, you know, it's not the shilliest shiller. And the, the solution was, or a solution that we came up with was conviction voting. And uh, I think it came to me from you. I don't remember where it came from exactly in my mushy mm-hmm. brain, but the I ether. think that... Yes, it came from the ether. Yes. Yep. I <laughs> I, uh, I uh, closed my garage door and turned on the ether and uh, conviction voting. But anyways, it's basically you put down a bunch of GTC toward your favorite grants, and that helps us sort it. It's all about getting the, the signal from uh, folks that are conv- have conviction for certain grants. So the goal is... You stake GTC. The longer you stake, the more voting power you have. That voting power is then used to sort the grants ahead of the Gitcoin round. So then when Gitcoin hits or when the grants round hits, uh, it, you can go to conviction voting right now uh, on uh, Gitcoin.co and you can see them sorted. So if you want to stake, go to voting.gitcoin.co and stake GTC. One one thing I wasn't expecting is a lot of people are staking a bunch and It's think of it more like almost like the quadratic matching stuff where it's we see people like stake or or send like one USD or five USD. Right. And it's a lot about the it's more about the signal than that one USD. And I think that's the same situation here where you should keep most of your GTC for like voting and delegation and, and, and governance, but stake a small amount of it and let it sit there and accrue. And let that be signal to us on what your favorite grant is. So then we can sort them instead of using a horse race of shillers, we can sort them by, uh, you know, conviction and and how uh, much conviction you have. So voting.getcoin.co is the website. Oh, you can even stake OGTC. It works on optimism, too. So if you're uh, if you're not down with L1, I don't know, it's pretty cheap to use L1 right now, but. If you want to get on L2, uh, it, you can switch over to Optimism pretty easily and stake your optimistic GTC also. Very cool. And was this built with any particular tool or framework that mm. you're associated with? Yes, sir. Thank you for the slow pitch. It was built with <laughs> Scaffold ETH by the Build Guild. Yes. So huge props out to Daniele, who shredded on this thing. It went from idea to prototype in like 24 hours, and then it went from prototype to uh let's let's get it out into production in about a week and that was all because scaffold eth is a good way to get going quickly and daniela is a hell of a builder and just like sat down and built it uh we noticed that when you delegate or when you uh when you stake the the delegation for your governance voting rights goes away on the piece that you staked so if i have 10 gc gtc and i stake 2 gtc my eight still remains delegated, but the two GTC, once they're staked, are kind of not voting rights at all. And eventually when they come back to me, I need to restake them. So you, we noticed that we're going to have to have folks, you know, have something for folks to redelegate. And I think you can use Tally. But also, uh, Daniele was like, fine, let's make delegation.tools, another app built with Scaffold ETH that allows you to like redelegate your GTC to other addresses, something he also put together in like 24 hours too. So, uh, you know, props to Daniele, props to the Build Guild, uh, props to Scaffold ETH for being able to build out quickly. Uh, we we got to figure out how to get this as like the default sorting method for next round. So just mm. planting the seed and getting it going. And even to extend on that, I think, Kevin, you uh, hinted at, I was thinking we would only be staked for like, a week and then we would all unstake and that would be the end of it but you hinted at like what if someone has staked for like two months on something like imagine how the the conviction curve would look and how how, how big your multiplier would be if you were willing to stake for months at a time so i don't know we'll leave right. it open-ended we'll see how it goes but i'll throw i'll throw it back to you any any thoughts on yeah. on how this conviction voting worked yeah well now that is gitcoin working? dao is is basically in charge of governing 
Gitcoin grants with GTC, I think it's definitely up to the DAO whether or not this becomes the default sorting mechanism. So let's just revisit the argument for doing that. Uh, in Gitcoin grants rounds one through 13, weighted shuffle was the sorting algorithm on Gitcoin.co slash grants. And because the more views a grants gets, the more funding it gets, there's a horse race at the, stop of the, at the top of the round where projects are trying to get more funding, which gives them higher matching multiple, which gives them a higher score in the weighting shuffle which creates this horse race in the top of the round. And the idea behind the GTC voting was let's use GTC, which is a governance token, in order to govern the sort order of the Gitcoin grants. And that will provide a more fair starting conditions for the grants going into Gitcoin, the, the Gitcoin grants round at the start, thereby not stopping the horse race, but sort of leveling it towards the ones that are most legitimate according to GTC governance. And so basically you go to voting.gitcoin.co, you can stake your GTC on the grants, and then that levels out the sorting mechanism on gitcoin.co slash grants. So the argument in Gitcoin grants round 14, if someone were to submit a proposal to make this the default sort, is that it will make the grants round more legitimate and less of a horse race feeding into the quadratic funding. Is that basically the argument for it? Yep, I think so. And and like going back on some other arguments uh, against it, people were uh, unhappy about losing voting rights or people were, uh, you know, wishing they didn't lose their delegation. And that's where I lean into just stake a small amount. If a whole bunch of like mm. the, the person who staked a bunch versus the person who staked a small amount, when we look at the conviction, when we look at the sorting, like they're almost the same on the front page. So you only have to stake a small amount to have a lot of uh, uh, impact on how this uh, conviction voting sorting works. I think that's it. Word. Nice. Yeah, if we get into a world where there's so many utility, so much utility for GTC and all these different apps, maybe we'll have to build a mega app or something where you can get all of the utility all in one place. Sounds Let's great. Float, Let's just keep building lots there. of little ones first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep shipping small ones. Cool. Well, I will keep putting ideas out into the ether if you keep huffing the ether and building them. And thanks again to Daniele for, for building that. Voting.gitcoin.co is the D app where you can do that. Is that right? voting.gitcoin.co okay refi summer has arrived and cello is here for it cello is the layer one blockchain for the regenerative finance movement it's fast planet positive and built for the real world cello has committed towards producing a sustainable future from the very beginning and is the world's first carbon negative evm compatible layer one blockchain cello has become much more than a technology a currency a community or even just a layer one cello is a movement to create conditions of prosperity for everyone you can soon engage with all of this via green asset uniswap pools on cello benefiting reforestation and other regenerative products through the Toucan protocol, Moss, and more. ReFi is also about the health of communities and resource network is creating bankless infrastructure for circular trade and mutual credit networks to benefit small businesses and local economies all on Celo. Follow along on Twitter to learn more about how Celo is accelerating ReFi summer for a positive impact on people, communities, and the planet. If you're attending ECC, visit the Celo Saloon to learn about what's happening on the front lines of ReFi from industry experts. So, you've got some money, but how are you going to use it? You want to spend. You, me, shopping, now, bro. When you know you should be saving. You'll never buy a house at this rate. But what if you could spend and save at the same time? For the enlightened kind, with inquiring minds, a new world awaits. Set yourself free with completely flexible, self-repaying loan technology. Supported on desktop and mobile, seize the power of Alchemix, allowing you to spend and save at the same time. Leverage your wealth without risk of liquidation. Take out a loan that repays itself. By using yield from your deposit to pay off your balance, your only debt is time. What was once inconceivable is now within your grasp. Are you winning some? Uh, one of the things that I really appreciate about this ecosystem where Gitcoin Grants 2.0 is being built and inside of the DAO is how modular it is. And so basically, like in the old world, if anyone wanted to change anything about the Gitcoin ecosystem, they would have to like pester me and get a PR into our repo. But y'all built this completely permissionlessly just using the open source code 
GTC as a governance token, as a money Lego, a list of grants that was available through the grants endpoint. And then you just basically provided this data source. So um, I'm really excited about the innovation that can be unleashed when Gitcoin is a modular ecosystem of money Legos. Um, and, and I think that we're starting to see that come into existence with the passport, with GTC, with the voting.gitcoin.co. And, uh, Lindsay, I'd love to have, have, uh, you talk a little bit about Gitcoin grants 2.0 and what this decentralized modular ecosystem is gonna, is gonna look like and where we're at with the build out on that. Yeah, such a fun build up to talking about it this time for like mm. uh, GR13. Last time we talked about it, it was just a vision and a strategy and a thing we were yeah. going to do. Um, but here we are, as Wilson talked about, we uh, have passport out and live um, conviction voting is um, being built with GTC. Um, and so we are at the point where all three key parts um, of the protocol are under development. Um, Passport you can interact with now. Grant Hub kicked off after that, um, which will be the home for all project owners or future grantees to create their projects and apply to any round that's running on the, the Gitcoin protocol. And the third piece being uh, the round manager that has also kicked off. Round manager is essentially um, the core protocol um, where a group that has a matching pool to deploy uh, we'll set up all their parameters, configure um, which mechanisms from the ecosystem they want to use. Are they using quadratic voting? Um, do you have some sort of civil resistance you'd like to plug in, be it the passport or something else? Um, and so you'll be able to configure that round the way you want to there. That's also just started under development. So uh, we'll see through the course of GR14, um, go interact with Passport. Um, and during the claims period, we're going to roll out the first opportunity for folks to create their project in Grant Hub. Um, this will be the place you'll want to put your project in anticipation um, of future rounds running on the decentralized registry. Um, it'll also be a place you can begin putting your project to um, participate in rounds um, that are run by any of our early partners. So that's the other opportunity folks have right now. Um, we are starting to seek um, partners who would like to be first adopters um, of that core protocol and run their rounds independently. Um, you can reach out to us. I'm Lindsay at Gitcoin.co um, or Kevin Olson at Gitcoin.co um, and let us know you're interested. Find us on Discord. Um, we're going to start the, the first step really with these folks is tell us more about your intentions in running um, a funding round. We want to get to know um, the ecosystem more deeply. So we're going to pull together what we're calling design partners, um, be an opportunity for us to interview you, but you'll also get a chance to um, be first folks poking around at prototypes, testing as we build. Um, and, and truly being a design partner with us to make sure we're building for the needs of the ecosystem. I think um, Gitcoin ourselves, we've done, um, we have 14 rounds of understanding under our belt on how we run around, um, but we're also rapidly discovering that there's a lot of innovation um, ahead of us. Um, and as each community comes to understand what their needs are and how they would govern their round, there's gonna be some unique elements. So we wanna design for that um, and ensure we stay modular and extendable. Um, so join our design partner program. Um, and it'll be a chance to influence uh, where we go from here. Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, can you say more about what a good de design partner looks like? It's like? It sounds like someone who's running a grants program themselves or wants to and EVM based. Is there anything else? Um, those are the big ones. I, also, you'd have to be willing to commit some time. Um, so I'd, I'd mm. expect to spend you know two or three hours a month um, interacting with us via in user interviews, um, testing the prototype. It shouldn't be anything super heavyweight. Um, but we will be looking for folks that are willing to engage and um, dedicate some time with us, um, sharing what, their, what your mission is, um, what you're trying to achieve, what, what the unique parameters of your program might be. Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, anything else to add about Grants 2.0 from the entire group? No, I think it's just exciting to kind of like, yeah, like Lindsay said, move out of the design phase and into the building phase. Stuff's coming live. Feels real. Yeah, it Future is real. Is here. Uh, I, I remember when we launched the DAO and someone hit me up on Twitter and they're like, you know what you're signing up for, right? You're going to turn a whole centralized company and get coin grants into a DAO. You, you're like, you, they're like, you know, that's going to take years, right? I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, I think that having it be decentralized and modular is going to make the platform more credibly neutral. And then the modularity is going to enable permissionless innovation. Austin, when the grants registry is out, I'm going to hit up the Build Guild and push some more ideas over to you. And it's really excited about this ecosystem of modular tools that can be used on grants and bringing quadratic funding into more and more ecosystems is going to be 
be really neat, I think. And hopefully we'll see a world in which quadratic funding, I think we're in 20 something rounds in Gitcoin grants round 14, Annika and Scott, correct me if wrong. Uh, what would a world where there's a hundred rounds running permissionlessly look like? That's really exciting to me. What's the exact number? Do you guys know? 18. So not quite 20, but hopefully next time. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, you know, the other thing that kind of gets really cool with Grants 2.0 is the ability to run different types of quadratic funding. So the monolith uses pairwise bonding for civil resistance. Our friends, uh, Orin at CLR Fund, use Macy for, for collusion resistance. And so what would a world look like in which we were using different forms of quadratic funding and just had them modularly plugged in to the protocol look like? I think that that's one of the neat things that I'm looking forward to as well. Um, anything else to say about Grants 2.0, GR14 before we wrap? Just this modular permissionlessness. If you're a builder out there listening, stop waiting for permission to go build something. It's permissionless. It's available. Mm. It's modular. Go build the thing. Yeah. And if you're a builder out there, don't be like me in 2017 and build it centralized to start. <laughs> or this in whole the dark. Rework. Build it out loud and show it off. Build it out loud. I love it. Um, how can people get GIT involved in Grants Round 14? Annika, I'll pass it on to you for this one. Yeah, if you're looking to apply for a grant or to donate to grants and see what's out there, go to gitcoin.co slash grants and you'll be able to see where you can do both of those things. If you're a funder who would like to get involved in Gitcoin Grants Round 14 or future rounds uh, on, on a bigger scale, uh, feel free to reach out to Scott or I. Um, I think we can use the the founders at Gitcoin.co email for that that one. And yeah, check us out in our Discord. Um, jump into the Discord. There's also the the support channel in Discord if you've got questions as you go through your application. And yeah, hit us up on Twitter as well at Gitcoin. And nice. well, very last point: if you want to join the uh, DAO, if you want to join the discussions on how the rounds are run, um, the future of Grants 2.0. Um, last one would just be gov.gitcoin.co. Um, it is, you know, a market for builders and there's plenty of building to be done there. That's a really Beautiful. good point. I think feel like Austin talked about kind of the permissionless and modular nature for builders and developers. Um, but if you're someone who also just has a vision around the future of public goods and early stage funding, come to gov.gitcoin.co gov and particip participate in the conversation. All of this is done in public. Um, so definitely extends beyond just developers, kind of that offer to to engage and, and have a say in, in what we're doing. That's the beauty of a DAO. Amazing. Well, thanks so much, uh, Scott, Annika, Lindsay, Kevin, and Austin, and especially to Daniele for building voting.gitcoin.co. Thank you for being on this podcast episode. I think it's informative of where grants uh, round 14 is for people right now, but it's also a historical time capsule for where we are with building out Grants 2.0 when it moved from vision into actually starting to be something that was real. And the markets are down, but our hopes for public goods are up. So contribute at gitcoin.co slash grants today, and we'll see you all on Twitter and on Discord. Thanks.